Last time that we spoke, you were pretty confident that the Republican Party was being underestimated, mostly because of the solid economy. But given the latest threats on trade and tariffs, is that still your assessment? Uh, Sherry, it is largely still my assessment. The question becomes when we're going to begin to see some of the negative impact of the rhetoric on trade, potentially tariffs. Uh, when will those begin to show up in the U.S. economy? We haven't seen it so far. We've had several months in a row of robust job creation, about 200,000 jobs uh, per month. We've also seen relatively strong GDP growth here in the United States uh, over the course of the last few quarters. And so really the big question is, is when, and if it doesn't come before the election, then I think Republicans are being underestimated in terms of their ability to hold on to control of both houses of Congress. And yet, Lani, the economy did not really play a major role in special elections. We saw candidates talking more about guns, immigration, other social issues. So what makes us think that this will be the key driver for the midterms in November? Well, special elections and midterm elections can behave a little differently, even than, for example, presidential elections. When you talk about midterm elections and you go back historically and look at the last several midterm election cycles, really what we've seen are elections that are dominated predominantly by the partisan bases of each party. Uh, and the partisan bases of each party are, are motivated by very different issues. But clearly one of the issues that motivates both is questions regarding the strength of the economy. And this is one area where I do think the Republican Party has an advantage going into the election. And if we see a, a midterm electorate that is very similar to what we've seen in previous elections, there is reason to believe that the Republicans could do better than people expect. The challenge, of course, is whether President Trump's lack of popularity amongst non-Republicans will be a drag against Republican candidates on their various electoral efforts. Lai hey, just to pivot away from uh, the talk about trade, the, you know, the sort of dual sagas of last week was Bob Woodward's work as well as this anonymous op-ed in the New York Times. How damaging is it for the president, both in terms of, I guess, just an existential sense that this is coming from his own administration uh, and also in, in sense of, of affecting his popularity? Well, first of all, for the president, this has been a week where I think he's felt cornered. I think he has felt very much uh, under attack, and it's resulted in uh, some pretty aggressive tweeting, which is usually what we see from the president when he uh, feels the need to respond to things. But generally speaking, there is an atmosphere of, of concern about what we've seen both from the Woodward book as well as from the uh, op-ed written anonymously in the New York Times. In terms of how it affects his popularity, you know, uh, Heidi, what we see here in the U.S is that people's opinions of the president are really largely formed. And so if you don't like the president, this episode uh, probably is another proof point as to why you don't like him. But there is a significant percentage of the Republican electorate in particular, almost 90 percent, that has a positive view of the president. And something like this, I don't think, affects their view of him. I think they generally are very positive toward him and will continue to be positive toward him, regardless of what kinds of developments we see coming out of the media.